Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Terry White and today we're going to be taking a look at the first ever, from what I'm told, photography Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Now you've had Photoshop Daily Creative Challenges before, but this one is going to be specifically based on photography. So what does that mean? I'm going to ask you to go out and take a bunch of pictures. No, I'm not. Actually, I'm going to give you pictures even if you don't have them to use. But if um, when, the, when the challenge is unlocked each day, if you want to go shoot something and then use that, that's great too. So how does this work for those of you who are new? And I see a bunch of people coming in. Uh, so hello, Kiata. Hello, Anthony. Hello, Jordan. Uh, hello, Keith. Victoria. Welcome, Victoria. Uh, Mina and Damien and Michael, and if I missed your name, it scrolled right by, Samuel, Jason, everybody coming from all over the world. So thank you guys for being here and thank you for hopefully participating in our daily creative challenge, which will start this week, officially tomorrow, I'm kicking off with the intro today, and it'll run through May 24th. And the way this works is, uh, as a matter of fact, let me just show you, let's switch over to the computer. And I've got um, the Daily Creative Challenge launched here on my uh, web browser. So to get to this page, you can go here now. It's behance.net slash daily creative challenge. And that's the normal URL, but we're going to add one more thing onto it, slash photo. And if you add slash photo, that should take you to this specific page, which is dealing with the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge for photography. So uh, one of the first things you're gonna do is hopefully sign in with your Adobe ID. Once you're signed in, then you'll be able to go ahead and tap on or click on the register button because as you can see, it says it knows me now. It says, hi, Terry, because I've signed in already. And then once I go to register, that's it. <laughs> I've, I've registered. It will now take me on to the next step. So I'll receive a Creative Cloud desktop notification tomorrow announcing tomorrow's challenge. There'll be a different one every day. And then uh, I can also join the community, which is very important. If you wanna participate in this, you wanna join the community so that you can participate in the chat, you get feedback on your images, I can review your images live on, on the show, and we can see everything that's going on that you guys are participating with. Uh, so there'll be the link to get the, get the Photoshop Discord channel and the app to do that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And uh, now, how does this challenge work for those of you who are new? So each day, you'll receive a challenge. So we've already planned out the next nine days or so worth of challenges, and each day they'll be unlocked. And if you scroll down this page, you can see the little lock icons that will run all the way through Friday, May 24th. So starting tomorrow at 8 a.m. Pacific time, uh, we'll unlock the first challenge. And I'll be streaming every day uh, at noon Pacific time, so that'll be 3 p.m. East Coast, uh, walking you through the challenge, walking you through some examples of the challenge, walking you through some images that you can edit. And of course, uh, I provided an image for you to download for each day. So that way, even if you don't have one, even if you've never taken a picture ever, which I find it hard to believe, but even if you've never taken a picture, you'll still be able to use the image that I provide. Now, do you have to use that image? Absolutely not. I'm just providing the image so that you'll have something to work with and you'll have something to use in case you don't have one that matches the challenge for that day. Can you go out and shoot something that day to use for the challenge? Absolutely. Uh, so it could be your picture that you already have. It could be my picture that I provided to you. It could be your picture that you go out and shoot that's brand new and fresh for the day. All right, so you'll join uh, each day. I know this says 1130, but it'll be noon because 1130 will be the XD challenge. Howard was just on doing that one, and he'll be on every day at 1130. I'll be on every day at noon. Then you'll complete the daily challenge and share it on Behance. I'm gonna walk you through that because there's a specific way to share it so that I'll see it, so that the team will see it, so that everyone will be able to see it using the keyword PS daily challenge and it has to be ps daily challenge and it's case sensitive so capital p capital s lowercase the rest to complete the challenge and grow your skills uh, you're going to share your nine challenges you have until the 26th so even though we end on the 24th which is friday 
We'll give you a couple extra days to that Sunday to submit all your entries. So even if you didn't do it each day, you can go back, look at the challenges and get them all in by the 26th. And so uh, what if you don't have Photoshop? Yes, I know that's hard to believe. There are people on the planet that don't have Photoshop and I've been trying to fix that for the last 20 or so years. But anyway, for the people that don't have it, and, and you say, well, maybe I don't know if I even want it yet or not. You can go get Photoshop right at the bottom of this page, and that will take you to a link where you can uh, see about Photoshop. You can download it, even if you don't have it, and even if you're not a Creative Cloud member, you can download it and uh, even sign up for a free trial. So with the trial, fully functional, you can use Photoshop for the challenge. You can use Photoshop for anything at that point uh, as a demo version or I should say trial version. And then of course, more importantly, or as important I should say, join us on Discord. So what is what is Discord? So let me pop down here. Actually, let me do it from my recent apps here. There we go. So this is Discord. There's a Photoshop cha channel that we set up for these challenges. I'm just gonna walk you through this because uh, I was new to Discord before this. Um, and I understand previously we're, we were using Slack, but now we're using uh, Discord instead. And the way this works is there will be um, each one of these sections that you can go through and walk through. So the first one is a welcome. And actually, scroll up. The first one is actually general under announcements. And under announcements means it's announcements. It's announcements, for general announcements from uh, Gus and other folks on the team, other Adobe employees as well. Then there's the daily challenge, uh, which Sam does a good job of showing you um, in case you didn't get it from the website or in case you're only on Discord, you can go ahead and see what the challenges are each day. She will post those um, bright and early in the morning each day so that you can see it either on the website that I showed you or here in Discord. Then uh, this is the welcome, which this is a very important recap of the information that I'm show sharing with you now. So if you're feverishly writing it down, trying to get all the notes. Don't bother, don't worry, because you can always come and get everything that I'm saying uh, from this page. So you can find out what the dates are, you can find out how to submit, you can find out how to see other entries, you can get the link to the live stream, you can check out the other channels, you can get it all right here. Uh, now, pro tips, this is kind of cool, because uh, if you're, most of you are probably new to Photoshop, um, we find that most of the people participating in these challenges are fairly new to the application. So you'll be able to get tips from other Photoshop users, Photoshop pros, people that uh, can give you tips on how to do, you know, some of the maybe not so basic things uh, to do in Photoshop. Then of course, there's the uh, community chat, which is, this is where you can have your voice. This is where you can uh, talk back and forth with other um, other people in the community, and of course, Adobe folks as well. So in introductions, simple as that. You can just go in and make an introduction of yourself, tell us who you are, what you do, why you do it, um, and you can give us links to where we can go look at your work. And then design feedback, this one's crucial because this one's important for people that are just starting out and you want that uh, critique. You want someone to look at your work and say, you know, what, what they like about it or what could be improved. Uh, so the critiques are always done in good nature. Um, they're n hopefully never cruel, but they sometimes can be honest. <laughs> and honesty can be confused with cruelty at times. Uh, but an honest critique is actually a good thing because it keeps you uh, improving on your work. Uh, ask a question, simple as that. You got a question about Photoshop, you can ask it right here and someone will usually reply with an answer. Tips and tricks. Now you might say, well, what's the difference between tips and tricks versus pro tips? Pro tips are from the moderators and uh, Adobe folks. Tips and tricks are from the community. So anyone can post a tip or trick here and uh, we can all see them and follow them as well. Then there's just a chat, just like the chat you're participating on for the stream. You have the chat you can participate here uh, when the stream's not going. And this is kind of cool. This is one that I like uh, when I look at all these channels. This is one that kind of excites me the most because it's a mentor channel. So if you're looking for someone to help mentor you and give you guidance along the way, you can even get that from this Discord channel. So um, lots of 
great stuff going on right in this spot. It's a great source for the community. We can keep, keep up with each other and keep up with what's going on with the daily challenges. And uh, of course, keep improving our knowledge of Photoshop. All right, let's see, did I miss anything before we jump in and actually go create a project and upload it? I think that's it. You can also watch a video here on how to participate in the challenge. So in case you uh, missed what I'm gonna show, you can actually watch it here. All right, I think that's it for the page. I'm gonna now pop over and we're gonna go to Photoshop and go over a few things. All right, so let's head over to Photoshop. I've got it running here and I actually launched it and I reset it back to the way Photoshop looks when you first launch Photoshop. So I am using the Essentials Workspace. And there's a workspace for each, each category of Photoshop user or the most common categories. So if you're into graphic design and web, you probably wanna to switch to that one. Uh, we're gonna switch over to the photography one since we're doing, dealing with photography. Uh, painting, motion, and 3D. Um, and what do these do? They kind of just expose features in the application and hide features in the application that aren't necessarily applicable to what you're trying to do. So for example, um, if I'm working in photography, then I don't need to see the 3D tools. That's just not something I need to see. It doesn't take it away from Photoshop, it just simply hides it at that moment. So for example, if I switch over to photography, it kind of simplifies the interface. It kind of like took away some panels that I didn't necessarily need right then and there. They're not gone. They're just currently hidden or turned off. And um, since the tool panel can be uh, reconfigured, it might have even reconfigured the tool panel. I haven't looked at this one lately to see, see if it does that, but it could do that. So let's bounce back to essentials. I'm gonna just look at it and glance at it and see if it changes. And yes, it did change because Essentials has less tools on it than the photography one did. So just keep in mind that, if, hey, if you see a tool that's that was there a minute ago and then it's not there, it may, have, it may simply be because you changed your workspace. And you can always get to the tools that are missing or the tools that are currently hidden by using this little menu at the very bottom, the Edit Toolbar menu. Um, this will show you should show you the tools that are currently not enabled. It might be because I don't have a document open, but that will get you to the tools that you currently don't see. All right, so with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to photography. There we go. I've got um, the photography window set up. And with these daily challenges, let's go through kind of what they're geared to. Um, when it comes to photography, actually Adobe has two major applications that photographers are using. You might have heard of Lightroom, and of course you've heard of Photoshop. What's the difference? That's the question I get all the time. Like, do I need Lightroom? Do I need Photoshop? Which one should I be using? And I'm glad we're doing this, this challenge on, on Photoshop because typically the Lightroom user can get up to speed fairly quickly and then they might get to a point where they need to do something that Lightroom doesn't do. And that's where Photoshop comes in. Uh, to answer the question, what's the difference between them? Lightroom is your tool for managing your photos. So think of it as your catalog, your database, your ability, and my tablet just turned off there, your ability to um, manage the photos that you have uh, on your hard drive, your ever-growing collection, or the ones that are in the cloud. Does Lightroom edit photos? It allows you to make adjustments to your photos that are non-destructive. But those adjustments are pretty, they're good, but they're pretty basic from the standpoint of you can either adjust the entire image or part of the image. And that's kind of where Lightroom stops. If you wanted to do more, if you wanted to add elements to an image that weren't there, if you really want to change the way an image looks, from a pixel level perspective, that's where you start to think about Photoshop. If you wanted to do compositing, if you wanted to add multiple images together, if you wanted to add type to the image, those are all the kinds of things where a Lightroom user has to stop and say, I've reached the limit of what Lightroom does, now it's time to look at Photoshop. So we're gonna start this week 
by looking at just those kinds of things that a photographer would want to do that Lightroom doesn't do. Now, we may have some overlap. I may show you something you're gonna say, oh, wait, wait, wait. Lightroom can do that, and you're gonna be right. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, this is not gonna be exclusive to just Photoshop, but uh, it features and, and is what it can and can't do. But um, for the most part, the things I will be showing you will be things that will be either, uh, can only be done in Photoshop and not Lightroom or easier to do in Photoshop versus Lightroom. And a prime example of that is removing distracting elements. In Lightroom, you've got a spot healing tool and it can remove distracting elements. But in Photoshop, you've got the patch tool You've got the uh, spot healing brush. You've got clone stamp. You've got a ton of different ways to do it, depending on what the photo is and what the distraction is that you're trying to remove. So and that would be a case where, yes, they both do it, but Photoshop does it so much easier and in many cases, better. All right, so let me give you some examples and then we'll go ahead and, and put together our, our challenge uh, submission so that you can see how that process goes. All right, I'm gonna give you an example of one of those where I wanna do something in Photoshop that Lightroom can't do. Now, Lightroom would be able to adjust the exposure. It would be able to adjust the colors. It would be able to adjust, uh, maybe the, the image looks like it's a little crooked on the horizon. It would be able to straighten it out for me. It'd be able to crop it and export it. Great, those are all great things that Lightroom can do. But what if, what if I wanted to bring this family closer together maybe move the mom and the dog closer to the son or closer to the little boy. Maybe it's not our son, maybe it's a nephew, I don't know. But maybe if I wanted to move those two people closer together, that's where Lightroom, you know, you're done. You can't do that in Lightroom because Lightroom is not a pixel editing program. It just doesn't do those kinds of edits. Um, for making all the adjustments, great. But when I wanna physically do creative things or uh, make adjustments to photos that are beyond just simple lighting adjustments. That's where Photoshop comes in. All right, so how would I do this? Well, first and foremost, there is a tool for this. And if I can get to it here, I'm looking in the wrong spot because I switched my um, workspace over. So let me find it real quick here. I'm looking for my, I'm not gonna tell you what it is. I'm gonna show you what it is. I am looking for, I'm gonna have to switch workspaces because I don't see the one I'm looking for. Hey, y'all, let me do it. I'll switch back to my own workspace and I'll know where it is. All right, here we go. I am looking for, um, nope, here it is. I am looking for the Content Aware Move tool, the letter J on the keyboard. Now, it wasn't that it wasn't in the other workspace and I could have found it if I'd gone into more tools, but I just knew where it was or knew kind of where it was in my own workspace. So let's use it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is take this tool. Now, one of the things I will recommend uh, just going forward, if you plan to take Photoshop seriously, you plan to use it going forward after this challenge, uh, you can do everything that I'm gonna do with a mouse or with a trackpad but you can do it so much better with a tablet. I'm not gonna you know, get into specific brands or models or anything like that. There's some great tablets out there and whatever tablet you get, no matter if it's a $50, $60 tablet all the way up to the ones that cost thousands of dollars, it's gonna be better than any mouse you can buy because one of the biggest differences between a tablet and a mouse, and especially in Photoshop, is that if you're brushing something or doing something, your mouse is either on or off. But a tablet, the stylus, has thousands of levels of pressure. So I can press a little harder to get a bigger stroke or harder stroke or darker stroke or a little bit lighter. And that's gonna really speed up your workflow going forward. So think about that, that investment if you plan to continue to use Photoshop going forward after the challenge. All right, so quickly, I'm just gonna use the Content Aware Move tool. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do a very precise outline here. And I'm joking, this is not very precise at all. But with a tablet, it lets me get a lot more precise than I would be with a mouse. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and work my way around. 
And now that I've made that selection, again, not very precise at all, um, I can now pick it up and move it. And you're probably gonna say, if you've ever tried to do this before with any other tool like the lasso or anything like that, you know that it's gonna do something bad. <laughs> it's gonna move it, but it's gonna leave a hole behind. It's gonna do some weird things. Well, the Content Aware Move tool is actually specifically designed for moving content. So if I were to pick this object up and move her over. Now keep in mind that I can't put her up here because then the, the background kind of won't match. So I really want to kind of line it up so that that little beige line that's kind of the horizon where, um, where, they're, where they're walking into the forest or towards the forest is kind of lined up. I don't want it down there. I don't want it up here. I kind of want to keep them lined up. And I want to get her a little closer and then I want to let go. You're gonna say, well, now you've got two. Now she's twins with the exact same pose and the exact same dog. It's awesome. Actually, we're not done yet because Content Aware Move also gives me the opportunity to scale it or distort it if I wanted to. So if I wanted to make her a little smaller, a little taller, whatever I wanted to do, I could do that now. Or I could say, nope, the size is perfect. I just needed to move her over. So now I can just go ahead and click the Commit button or OK or Enter on the keyboard and Photoshop will do its magic. It will not only move her over, but it will start to fill in the background. And if you look at it and you say, well, at first glance, yep, it moved her over. If I deselect, she's there. But I can kind of see some trace elements of what I just did. Now, that could be a couple of things. That could be, well, it was a bad selection, and it was. And it could also just be the background you're taking it from and moving it to could just have some things that didn't fill in well. So you can either decide to try it again, maybe with a different selection, or you can spend time fixing the little things that it didn't do quite right. It's really up to you. And uh, when we do these challenges, one of the thing, main things I wanna point out, and I'm gonna fix this by the way, but when we do these challenges, one of the main things I wanna point out is that in Photoshop of all the other applications we have, there are at least one, two, three, four million ways to do something. No, just kidding. There's usually a ton of ways to do the same thing. So users will usually get into a debate about, well, I would have used the blink tool or I would have used this setting or I would have used that. And I always say, that's great, use it because it's really a personal preference. Um, what, makes, what makes Photoshop so great is that it can, you can do the same thing a million different ways. And it really boils down to which way works best for you. So don't get caught up in uh, the way someone else would have done it. Get caught up in the way that worked best for you. Now, if you're struggling and something doesn't, is not working right, then that's where you look at well, how could I do this better? How could I do this a different way? But if you like the way you're doing something, don't get bothered by the way someone else does it. If you like the way and the results you're getting. All right, let me undo this for a second. So I, un I did Command Z or Control Z on Windows to undo the, undo the deselect, undo again to move it. And then what I wanna look at up here are there some settings for structure and color. And I know I'm getting into the weeds with this particular feature, but depending on your selection and depending on where you're moving it from, those settings matter. Those settings will adjust uh, the selection or, or the area that you're moving it, the area that you're moving into the new area. So I could either do one of two things. I could improve my selection or try the different settings. And that's what I mean by it depends on which, what's easier for you. So I could maybe say, you know what? I could do a better selection this time. Let's go in and just get a little tighter and again, it's not going to be still not going to be super accurate. It's still not going to be super perfect. But if I get a little tighter, then there'll be less of an issue or less of a chance that it's going to select things that I don't want or leave things that I don't want. That's a better way to put it. Now, you might say, well, Terry, why don't you use something like Quick Select or Select Subject for those that know Photoshop? Because in those cases, um, it will actually select it too tight. In other words, we want to leave a little space around the subject with this particular tool. All right, so we'll just pick her up again, move her over. Now, when I set her down, you'll, you'll be able to see kind of what's going on here and where we're going to put her. 
but keep in mind that those settings can also be adjusted to make it better. So if you don't like it, um, before you move her over or undo it and try changing structure and color to make it better. So we'll click OK. That will do a fill in. We'll deselect and better. I like it better. Maybe a little bit of adjustment right there and right there, but pretty much I like the rest. All right, so now what about this kind of like this little space is kind of like weird, like there was something there kind of look. Well, that's when we get into talking about ways to fix it. So for example, I might use the patch tool and I might go around that and just simply patch from a different area of the background to kind of blend that in. Same thing here. I don't know if that was left over from the selection or not, but since I can see it now, we can just kind of easily patch those things to remove them and remove those distractions. Now, same thing, if I zoom in, get a little closer here, I could either try and patch this out or I could try um, just clone stamp would probably be better in this case. So let's do stamp, let's make the brush smaller and smaller yet. And we're just gonna use the background and just kind of remove some of that older, darker background from around the hair. And how much time you spend on it and how accurate you want it to be is literally up to you. If you want to get more accurate, spend more time, make a better selection to begin with so you won't be spending your time doing this. Try adjusting the color settings so you won't be spending your time doing this. It's all up to you. All right, that looks pretty good. And I could zoom in and even do a better job, but this is just quick and dirty for today. We will learn different ways to do these kinds of things in the challenge. All right. And of course, now that I'm zoomed in, I'm seeing more, more things I want to adjust. But it's looking pretty good overall. All right. So if these are the kinds of techniques maybe with better results that you want to learn, then you want to stick around for the challenges that we're going to be doing this week. All right, so now if I looked at that at first glance, she was there all along. I don't, what I have, my, my litmus test is, if I look at this, if I were to open this up, would I believe that this was the photo? And if I don't see anything that tells me otherwise, then yes, I've done a good job. If I see something or something's distracting me or something like, oh yeah, down there, that, that, that will still be green across there, then I'm gonna go fix that little thing because anything that's gonna give it away that I moved it, or I think people would notice, those are the kinds of things I would go fix. All right, so now that we got this, um, and now, now I can't not see that, by the way. So let's fix that real quick. And we're almost out of time. Ah, no wonder we're online. There we go. It's like, why isn't that doing it? All right, now that we got that, we'd save it. And let's go ahead and save it as a JPEG. And you would give it a better name. Save it out onto the desktop. And then we would go over here and we would go ahead and create a project. We would upload our files, that one that I just made. Did I not save that to the desktop? I thought I did. I didn't. JPEG. We're gonna go over all of this in the, in the actual challenges. And there it is. And then we'll bring that in. And once that loads up, we'll just go through the process of hitting next. And there's one more thing I wanna show you and then we're done for the day. And that is continue. You're gonna make your cover image. It actually looks good as a cover image. title 
And here's the big thing. Under discoverability, if nothing else, you want to make sure you do Photoshop. And I believe it is. I need to go back and look. Ah. It is the Photoshop Daily Challenge. Hold on. There it is. Photoshop Daily Challenge. So I'm just going to copy that. Put that right here. Let's get rid of that. Paste. Get rid of the period. Comma. All right. And publish. So once you publish it with that hashtag, we'll be able to find it. I just want to make sure it's the right. Yep. With the right keyword. Right keywords and publish. All right, folks. That's my time. Join me tomorrow. Same time, same channel, 12 p.m. Pacific, and we will kick things off with our first challenge image. Bye, everybody. Have a great one. Thank you.